Good morning to you. I am Karen Clymer at my kitchen pulpit today, kneading bread for the master. Remember, we are as Silver Citizens, this is Silver Citizen Believers Brigade, uh, it's our page. And so as Silver Citizens, God has a plan for us. He tells us in Titus 2, the older are to help the younger. We are to be setting an example. I'm ready to knead my bread this morning, or dough too, so it's going to be bread before it's over with. So it's great to be here with you today, and the, the message the Lord has laid on my heart is about being dedicated, devoted, exclusively devoted to the Lord, exclusively yours, Lord. So let's begin kneading our bread this morning. It's so great to have you this morning, and I'm so grateful that we can give our all to the Lord, and He receives us, and may we receive Him, love Him, and serve Him. I'm going to let him need me, K-N-E-A-D, because he needs me, N-E-E-D-S. He needs me. I'm telling you, we need to be working for the Lord uh, all of the time, but as never before as we see the condition that our world is in and our own nation. Let us pray and believe and be those people that are totally devoted to our Lord, exclusively yours, Lord. No spiritual adultery. Our scripture today is taken from Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4. This is from the King James Version. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Again, that's Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4. Oh, isn't this wonderful? We, the Lord gives us exact direction. We don't have to guess where we're going. You know, sometimes we get lost when we're going somewhere, a, a city, and we get lost trying to find the address. But the Lord helps us here. He gives us direction how to live for him in this age and time. It doesn't matter what age it is, God has always been faithful and will be, and that includes our generation in this momentous time that we are living now. Years ago, I worked in a contact center where a group of us was dedicated to one particular business, one customer. And we didn't take calls from any, anybody else. They routed nothing but the calls to this one company. It, what it was called was being dedicated. And uh, then we had other uh, members there on, a, on our, this team where I worked that they waited on all kinds. They took calls from customers, all different types of businesses. But I was designated for this particular team. We were dedicated. We didn't study anything else but this particular company that we were representing. And it was important that we know every detail, that we be able to properly assist those customers when they called in. But this is what came to my mind when I was thinking how the Lord was speaking to my heart about our dedication to Him. And I thought of only, dedicated only to Him. And He said, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. And we were to set our affection on Him. He wants us to be wholly, solely dedicated to Him. Not because He's a tyrant, but because He is the one true God. And He has the plan for our life. And we'll never be blessed and happy and really as effective as we could be. And we'll certainly never be into the, enter the kingdom of heaven without being totally sold out and devoted to the Lord. Well, He told us to be dedicated solely, wholly to Him. Seek those things which are above. Now think about seek. That's not just a casual looking around, but it's seeking, really looking, making an intense effort to be sure that we are, we're doing it, seeking those things which are above, not the earthly things. You know, they may glitter and there may be, seem like a lot of glamour, but I can tell you this, it's temporal. We've seen enough of that. I, I heard a gentleman say, a preacher was preaching the other day, and he made a statement I thought was very true is important to think about he said you can you may you can choose your sin but you can't choose the consequences you know people don't aim for that to happen you know 
Uh, they think I'll just dabble in this and have a little fun, it'll be okay. Well, it doesn't always work that way. So remember, you can choose your sins, but you can't choose the consequences. But I don't want to live in sin. I want to live in truth and righteousness, so we want to love the Lord. And I want to seek for things eternal, those things that are lasting, and to be able to live with Jesus forever, to be there in that great kingdom and be a worker there. You know, we're not going to be lousing around. We're going to be working in the glory world. Remember, we have a jealous God. Yes, he's jealous of his own. He wants faithfulness. He's faithful to us, and he wants us to be faithful to him. In a marriage, it's so important that the spouses are faithful. When you see adultery enter in, how many marriages have been ruined? If they didn't, if even if they did stay together, they're tainted. It's just, it's extremely, it's wrong. And you know that when we take our marriage vows, we're saying, you know, we're going to be true. We're going to keep our vows alike. He said it's supposed to be until death do us part. We understand there are those who have spouses who walk out on them. I understand that. But as far as our spiritual relationship, I tell you what, we don't have to be concerned about, is God going to be faithful? He is faithful. And so the thing is for us to be faithful to him. We must beware of spiritual adultery, you know, dabbling in sin. Uh, those things, it's so wrong, it taints the relationship. And uh, speaking of relationship, I was thinking how there are a number of people that I know have had an encounter with God. But they don't have a relationship. It's just from time to time they want to have an encounter with God. You know, go to church maybe and have an encounter with God. And it's almost as though it soothes their conscience. Or they can brag and tell people, well, they have been to church. And, well, I, I went the other day and that's like, okay, I've got my, my little dose of church. And so now I can go ahead and do what else I was doing on my own. Dabble into sin or go do, take a deep dive into sin. That's not the way we want it to be, but have that relationship with the Lord where we love Him, serve Him, and are faithful to Him. Set your affection on things above. I love where I was reading that one writer, Dake, Finest Dake said, Love heavenly things and be engrossed by them. Isn't that wonderful? I love that word picture. Love heavenly things and be engrossed by them. I think of uh, on a cruise control on a car. You lock in. You lock in the speed. When you lock that speed in, and it maintains that, whether you're going up a hill or where you're going down, it maintains that. I thought, Lord, is so great that we can be locked in. We can be have our affection set <coughs> on you. Our life, <coughs> pardon me, our life is hid with Christ in God. We're, it's concealed. We're safe with him. Isn't that great to know that? That we are safe with him. Our life is hid with Christ in God. We are safe. We are secure. And I, then I, as I said from the beginning, exclusively yours, Lord. There was a song that I heard years ago, and only recently did I hear it again. But the first time I heard it, I loved it. It was exclusively yours exclusively yours, Lord, not a part-time love, but a love that endures. And that's the thing that I want us to think about today as being completely dedicated, consecrated solely to the Lord and that we can say to him, I'm exclusively yours, Lord, exclusively yours. No, not a part-time love, but a love that endures. And everything I do, Lord, it's all because of you and for you. It's less of me and more of you. I don't have a part-time lover over here, Lord, that I want to participate with from time to time. But it's no, Lord, it's you. It's Jesus only at all times. I love you, Lord. I want to serve you. I do serve you. I commit my life to you. Yes, I will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. I'm going to be on my pl in my place and know this, that the Lord has a specific, specific place for us. I was thinking, and I believe the Lord brought it to my mind about in the Army. You know, the name of our page is, is the Silver Citizen Believers Brigade. And we're talking about military action. You know, we're soldiers for the Lord. But I thought he places us in different things. You know, the Lord has me doing what I'm doing. 
and he has other people doing something totally different, but we're all workers for him. And the thing of it is, all of his children, if we're obedient and faithful to him, I mean, it's going to make, a, we make a great team. We make a great army. So may we be faithful and yielded and devoted. And then when the Lord speaks to us, we are ready for action at all times. We don't have to run and pray through right quick. But every day, may we pray and believe and say, Lord, I'm exclusively yours. And here I am ready for action. Thank the Lord that we can do that. And he is so grateful to have children that obey him and are faithful and are about the master's business. So go ahead, let the Lord need you and let him bless you. The question is, I ask myself and I want you to ask yourself, am I totally devoted to God? Are we exclusively his being a faithful, joyful bride? May the answer be yes. And if it is not, it can be. Because right now, if you have been unfaithful to the Lord and you've been committing spiritual adultery, we can call out to the Lord and say, Lord, please forgive me. I want to be like you. Change me, Lord. I want to turn all the way around and be the child of God you can count on. May the Lord bless you and keep you and we'll see you next Friday, the Lord willing, and hopefully I'll be more on time. Goodbye.